And here we are, 2.4, the sine and cosine ratios. So we've been looking at trigonometry. We know we need to have a right angle triangle. And we did some work on the tangent ratio, which had the adjacent and opposite signs important. Now there's a third side that we call the hypotenuse. And now we're going to look at the two ratios that now involve the hypotenuse. So the first one we're going to call the sine ratio. Sine is the angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Then there's a the cosine. Cos of the angle is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So both of these formulas now bring in the idea of the hypotenuse. One deals with the opposite, that's the sine, and one deals with the adjacent, that's the cos. So if we're looking at solving a triangle, we can now have multiple options. We have multiple tools. We could use the tan, we could use the sine, or we can use the cos. Because we have multiple options, labeling the triangle is very important. So if we don't label correctly, we'll use the wrong formula, get a wrong answer. So again, our first step in every trigonometry problem is to label the opposite, label the adjacent, and label the hypotenuse. So we're going to look at this in a very similar way that we did the tan ratio. Before we actually go solving, we're going to actually find out what the sine of A is, what the sine of B is, what the cos of A is, and what the cos of B is. So this exercise allows us to label the triangle and pull out the right information in order to solve. So we're going to start off with A, sine of A. So there's angle A right here. So we're going to label this triangle based on angle A. And again, I think labeling hypotenuse is the easiest, so I'm going to start right here. Here's my 90. I go across the triangle, hypotenuse. Now we need to label the opposite and the adjacent. Well, here's my angle A through the triangle to get to my opposite. And the one touching the angle, the one that's left over, is the adjacent. So what is the sine of A? Well, the sine formula is sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So let's see what we got here. We got the sine of A. And what is the opposite? Well, the opposite side of labeled as 8.6. And I have to divide that by the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse I've labeled to be 10. So what math can I do now? Well, I can't do much with the sine of A right now, but I could do 8.6 divided by 10. So sine of A equals, go to our calculator, 8.6 divided by 10 is 0.86. Now normally I like to go to four decimal places, but this division was pretty simple. Four decimal places not needed, 8.6. So let's skip now, because I got the diagram labeled to the A's, let's skip now to the cos of A. So I'm going to write here the cos of A is the adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So these formulas need to kind of be familiar to you. You should be able to pull them out at a moment's notice. So cos of A is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Cos of A is, well, my adjacent. I've got labeled to be 5. Hypotenuse, I've got labeled to be 10. And of course, I can work this out. The cos of A is going to be equal to 5 divided by 10, 0.5. So 
So I've got my A's all worked out. Now I've got to switch to my B's, and I'm going to switch colors here. I'm going to do the sine of B and the cos of B. Whenever I change angles, I must relabel the triangle, because you can see that angle B is right down here. So we already saw from the tangent ratio that hypotenuse isn't going to change. It's still the longest, it's still across from the 90. However, if I go to angle B and go through the triangle, my opposite now becomes up here. Meaning this must be my adjacent. So just like the tangent ratio, when I flip angles, the opposite and adjacent both flip. So let's work this out now. The sine of B is the opposite divided by my hypotenuse. Sine of B, my opposite now has become 5, and my hypotenuse has become 10. Which, of course, I can work out. Sine of B is 0.5. Now you'll notice when I flipped angles, opposite and adjacent flipped, I get an answer of sine of B to be 0.5. That's the same as the cos of A was 0.5. So you can see there's a relationship between sine and cos in terms of flipping sides, in terms of what they equal. Now let's do the cos of B. And I can probably predict that the cos of B is going to be equal to 0.86. It should work out that way. Let's try it. Cos of B is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cos of B adjacent now is 8.6 divided by 10. And finally, cos of B, 8.6 divided by 10 is 0.86, just like I had predicted. Now we know when we're actually going to solve for these angles, there's another step we have to do. But this is just allowing us to label our triangle and pull out information and do a little work with it. We're showing the same format here that we did with the cos. But now let's go and actually solve. We'll flip our page and look at another example. Determine angle F. So we're not asked for the sine of F or the cos of F. We want to find what the ang actual angle is, but the restriction is we're going to use the sine ratio. And then we're going to find E, but we're going to use the cosine ratio. So let's start labeling this triangle for F. Again, hypotenuse, longest one, cross from the 90. through the angle and the triangle to get to the opposite. And touching the angle is the adjacent. So we're going to solve for f using sine. So sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Let's plug in what I know. Sine of the angle my opposite was 4, and my hypotenuse was 7.2. Okay, so now I can do 4 divided by 7.2. So I'll go to my calculator, punch these in. Sine of the angle is going to be equal to 0.555, your whole display, display lights up with fives. So we round to four decimal places, which makes it six. So now, just like the tangent ratio, when we want to solve for the angle, we have to do the inverse of sine. So this is where we're going to have to hit our second function button. So I type in 
my decimal, 0.5556. I hit the second function button, sine, and my angle is going to be 33.7 degrees. Final answers, we're going to go to one decimal place. So we round it to 33.7, and my unit for an angle will always be degrees. Okay, now let's solve for E using the cosine. So again, I changing angles, I got to relabel. Hype stays the hype. Through the angle, through the triangle, to the opposite. Touching the angle is the adjacent. So, cos of the angle is adjacent divided by hype. Cos of the angle, my adjacent is 4, my hype is 7.2. Now, I've seen this fraction before, right? It's right down here. So I know 4 divided by 7.2 is 0.5556. So cos of the angle equals 0.5556. I'm looking for my angle, so i got to get rid of the cos. So that means second function time. 0.5556, second function, cos. My angle is going to be 56.3 degrees. Again, rounded to one decimal place. So there's a definite relationship between the sine and the cos. You can almost look at them as opposite operations. I'm going to show you one other way we could have solved for angle E. Now I know F was 33.7. Now we talked on the tan that if we got a triangle, all the angles of a triangle add up to 180. So I start with 180, and I'm going to subtract the 33.7. And I have to subtract this angle here. Now the question is, what is this angle? Well, the square tells me that that's 90 degrees. So I'll take away 90 degrees as well. 180 minus 33.7 minus 90, that would give me 56.3 as well. So when you have two angles, subtracting them both from 180 will give you the third. Now the question did ask for us to use the cosine ratio, so we would have to show all this work, but a little check for us as well. So let's go to our textbook, please. We're going to go to page 95, 2 from the A's, 5 from the B's, 1 from the C's.